Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Lollipop, and this is the brand new 2022 Trek Excalibur 9. This bike has had some good updates for 2022 and this is actually the first bike I've ever seen in person. So today I'm super excited to give you guys a nice walk around of the bike. I'll go over all of the specs on it, I'll weigh the bike, and then finally I'll go on a test ride and give you my overall thoughts and initial impressions on the bike to help you figure out if it's going to be worth that price point. Now I have made a more detailed video on this bike in specific and in that video I covered all the changes from 2021 to 2022 to give you all those updates and changed parts and all that stuff. So if you want you can check out that video I'll link it on the top right of the screen right now as well as put it in the description below but for now let's get right into this video. Now this bike is the highest end bike in the Trek Excalibur range which means it also comes with a high price tag of 1930 US dollars currently. The bike I have in front of me is in a size medium and I weighed it in at 28.7 pounds on our scale at Trek Sacramento. Um, the official weight on Trek's website is 27.61 pounds. So this bike does weigh about a pound more than the official weight, but the weight does vary from bike to bike. But that brings us into what this bike is for. So this bike has a focus on being lightweight and efficient over having more capability while going downhill. This bike is primarily designed for people who wanna go faster on lighter trails, but it can definitely handle some rougher stuff if it needs to. So let's go over those specs and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so for the specifications on this Excalibur 9, I'm going to start off with the Excalibur frame. So this frame is actually the same one that was used last year in 2021 as well as in 2020, but it does come in a new color, which is Alpine Blue. Well, this color is not new for Trek, but it is new for the Excalibur 9. So you can kind of see that here and it looks fairly nice. Besides that, this bike still has a tapered head tube as you should expect at this price point for a stronger front end. It also has boost 110 spacing in the front for added strength as well, but unfortunately, for 2022 still we have that quick release axle in the rear with boost 141 spacing for a two thousand dollar bike these days that is not the best for sure hopefully trek updates that in the near future but besides that we also have an alpha gold aluminum frame so you can see that right here you have the nine number right there to signify the excalibur nine but as you can see it is alpha gold aluminum and that basically just means that the bike has smooth welds it's fairly lightweight and strong another quick thing i like to mention in all of these excalibur frame reviews is that all of the excaliburs have this sword and shield logo on the back of the seat tube to denote that it is an excalibur so that's kind of a cool little quirk of the bike for the actual components let's start off with the suspension fork so this is the rockshox recon gold rl suspension fork you can see the recon logo right there it has 32 millimeter wide stanchions which is great for cross country it has the debon air spring as well as the motion control damper so great damping and a very efficient suspension fork overall and of course it does have that lockout on the fork as well so you can lock it out and make it fully rigid for more efficiency unfortunately this year does not have a remote lockout as it did last year so that is a bit of a downgrade which is pretty unfortunate and lastly the suspension fork does have a hundred millimeters of travel as it should for a cross-country bike that is designed to be more lightweight and fast now we can talk about those wheels right there so we have the Bontrager Covey aluminum uh, rims which are tubeless so that's very nice to see they have a 23 millimeter inner diameter and with those rims we also have the tubeless ready Maxxis Ardent Race tires which are 60 TPI and they are 29 inches in diameter as well as 2.35 inches wide. So a great amount of stability, which is really nice. And you have some good traction as well on these tires. They're really great tires. And I'll also quickly mention here that this bike is fully tubeless set up from the store. So it has sealant installed right now, no inner tubes, so no risk of getting pinch flats or flats from thorns and things like that. So definitely a better setup for a mountain bike. But a big change for 2022 is definitely this dropper post right here. So I'll go over that next. This is a Bontrager line dropper post and it has a hundred millimeters of travel in this medium frame size. And of course a 31.6 millimeter seat post clamp diameter right there. And you can see the lever on the handlebar right there as well. Pretty generic metal lever. And of course this frame does have a hole in the back of the seat tube to route that internal dropper post. Um, the Marlins do not have that feature, but the Excalibur frames always have that feature. So that's really nice to see. They also have another hole right here, I guess for a front derailleur mount if you need it or something like that. But for some of the finishing components now, we have the pretty typical Bontrager Arvada seat with steel rails. That's very common on a lot of Trek mountain bikes. And then for the handlebar and stem, we have a Bontrager Elite 70 millimeter long stem in this medium frame size with a 31.8 millimeter clamp and the Bontrager alloy handlebar with a 5mm rise and a 720mm width 
perfect for cross country. Uh, pretty flat bar there as well. And then for the brakes, we have the Shimano two-piston hydraulic disc brakes. You can see the levers right here. These are the MT4100 uh, levers, which are not bad, but not the highest end either. We also have the MT4100 calipers right here, which are also two-piston. They're pretty nice, definitely better than the MT200s that we are seeing on some uh, Trek bikes like the Marlin 8, Marlin 7, and even Excalibur 8. So this, these are definitely an upgrade over those and they're fairly nice. So these calipers are lightweight enough and from the Dior 10 speed line, but definitely could be better for sure. They get the job done for cross country riding, but uh, you could still upgrade them and have a better brake with more bite. And finally, we come to this beautiful drivetrain for 2022. I'll start off with the shifters up here. So this bike does come with the Shimano SLX spec lever shifter. So you can click the shifter with your thumb or your index finger to shift to a harder gear. And you can actually shift up to three gears at a time. So one, two, three, uh, to go to an easier gear for uphill climbing. So that's a pretty nice feature. These are very durable. I like this shifter a lot. So I'm definitely happy with that. And then for the actual drivetrain itself, we can start off with this uh, Shimano Dior crank set, which is a 30 tooth crank set and has a 170 millimeter length on there, which is great. For this frame size and then we use the shimano slx chain which is a good chain as well back to the rear cassette which is also the shimano slx m7100 rear cassette it is a 10 to 51 tooth so a very wide range basically all you need for mountain biking and it has that black mega tooth cog up there which is really nice as well and then of course we have a very nice shimano xt m8100 rear derailleur which is a very durable very high-end derailleur and i'm pretty happy that they specced uh this one on the bike it of course has that clutch mechanism right there so you can add tension on the chain so right now it's pretty loose and then you can click it on and then it's a lot tighter that just helps keep the noise down as well as prevent uh, any shifting errors and things like that so overall a very nice drivetrain i'm happy with this one this is basically the same drivetrain that they've had on the bike uh, in previous years so not that crazy but it's still a tried and true drivetrain and i'm happy with that for sure but that's it for the main components on this bike. Now I'm gonna go take it out on a test ride and give you my thoughts at the end of the video. All right, now we are finally test riding the Trek Excalibur 9. So this bike definitely does feel lightweight. It's not the lightest in weight at, you know, 20, almost 29 pounds there, but it feels a little lighter than that. It definitely is pretty easy to like lift up and throw around and it definitely feels fairly fast. Let's go up a little hill here. Yeah, obviously this drivetrain is very good. I've ridden this drivetrain before. I have it on my Pro Caliber, so I'm used to it. It's very good. Brakes, I mean like, they're good. Once again, cross country, you're not gonna be going like insane on this bike, but they could be better. Suspension fork is nice. I like the wider stanchions. Lockout works well enough. Let's zoom down. Dropper pose. Very nice to have a dropper post on this bike. Definitely happy about that. 100 millimeters of travel isn't that much, but it's still nice to have some rather than none. So. If you were to buy this bike, I think it's a great bike overall. I'm still just worried about that price point. My overall thoughts are, it's a pretty good bike. It's it's durable, stable. It's good for what it needs to do. It doesn't necessarily need any upgrades right out of the box if you want to go cross country riding. But if you want to do something a little bit more, it would need some upgrades. This frame is feeling a little bit dated now too. So I'd really prefer through axles and stuff like that. But if you do end up buying this bike, it's definitely going to be great for you. If you use it as a commuter and as a trail rider, it can kind of do it all because it's going to have a lot of good components on it that are going to be very reliable in the long run. And I think it does have good components where it counts like the drivetrain. It's a good bike, but I just wish for this price point you were getting a little bit more. And I hope to see improvements on this bike in the future, especially with the frame. But yeah, that's basically it for my initial impressions and initial review on this bike. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and as always, remember to keep biking.